Shai Franklin, he is a partner with Gotham Government Relations. So uh, I think we can see some pictures now showing the aftermath and the impact that these bombs can have. It's, it's extremely severe. Why are they still being used in Ukraine, given these implications? Well, first of all, let me just say I'm actually in New York, not London, uh, but we do sp still speak English. It, I cannot answer for the Kremlin's decision to introduce cluster munitions during its invasion of Ukraine. The, the list of international laws that have been violated uh, by, by the Kremlin, by Vladimir Putin, is very, very long. And, uh, you know, just, just, just the invasion itself is a violation of international law. The cluster munitions that the Russians are using are targeted at civilian populations. The uh, Ukrainian army has recently started using cluster munitions from the United States as a, uh, as specifically to focus on frontline troops on Ukrainian territory, Russian troops. Um, but uh, but the, the bulk of these, these injuries and these deaths are from the Russian side. And of course, the scale of destruction is, is much higher than just what's caused by the Russian cluster munitions. Interesting that you mentioned the U.S. there, because they are one of four countries now who are still using these cluster bombs. In fact, 124 countries are signed up to this U.N. convention to ban them now. So why are they still holding out? I think well, there, there are different reasons. Uh, Russia and Ukraine have also not, not signed this convention. The United States has a an unfortunate... Uh, an unfortunate tendency not to join international conventions that it, we feel, we Americans or American leaders feel, uh, American politicians, I should say, feel tie our hands. And that doesn't mean that the United States has been using cluster munitions of late, but uh, but there was, a, I think, a reluctance to sign on to that, as, as there was a reluctance to sign on to the International Criminal Court, uh, the treaty f forming the International Criminal Court as well. Uh, that doesn't mean that the United States rampantly violates uh, international law left and right, but uh, that is unfortunate. And uh, But I think maybe if, if Russia doesn't sign on, then uh, it's harder for the United States to sign on, knowing that Russia actually does intend to use cluster munitions, as we've seen. So the United States has now belatedly provided uh, these cluster munitions to Ukraine, along with many other weapons, but Ukraine has no interest in in killing civilians. It's not part of their military strategy. So they are focusing any cluster munitions that they use on the front lines and on their own territory. I'm not excusing it, but it, it is very different. And the delayed effect of these kinds of bombs means that any cleanup operation is going to take years, decades. It's going to be very complex for each country that uses them. That's right. Each country that uses them and each country that where they're used on, on that country's territory. And the, the Russians have also laid, uh, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of landmines, which have a, even a more devastating impact uh, than the, these uh, idle cluster munitions. So, uh, so once the cluster munitions land on the ground, they basically become landmines. And so that is that's just part of this overall, overall fabric of, of war and, and war crimes, really. So I think they need to be seen within that context to understand the scale and the reasoning behind using them by the Russians and now by the Ukrainians. Okay, Shai Franklin, live in New York. Thank you. Pleasure.